definitely overdressed. <clears throat> I've been mistaken for a limo driver three times already. My life is Every a love day is movie. a love movie. We happen to catch all those magical moments. And right here, please. Hollywood comes to the Hamptons. Good evening, I'm Jill Nicolini, and this is a Fox 5 Hamptons International Film Festival special presented by Capital One. Over the next half hour, we'll show you how the East End rolled out the red carpet, showcasing the best of independent films from around the globe. We begin our show tonight outside the normally tranquil Guild Hall in East Hampton, where Alec Baldwin and Richard Gere caused quite the scene. The 63-year-old Pretty Woman actor was interviewed by Baldwin for the Conversation with series. He was also honored with the festival's 2012 Golden Starfish Award for Lifetime Achievement in Acting. Part of it is saying, Richard, you're very old and you've done a lot of things and you must have lived a long time to done those things. You know, I'm happy that my mother and father are around and they can enjoy this stuff too. Oh, that's great. They put a lot of work into me. And all that work paid off because Gear has more than 50 film credits to his name. Alec Baldwin, who is a board member of the festival, also made an appearance at the annual chairman's reception. That's where we find our Julie Chang, who caught up with the 30 rock star and his new wife. Okay, a rocky wardrobe choice for me here at the Hamptons Film Festival, but a very solid turnout at the annual chairman's reception, including a very cute lovey-dovey moment with Alec Baldwin and his wife, Hilaria. So as they say in the film business, roll it. The Hamptons looked more like Hollywood as movie heavy hitters showed up at the chairman's reception in East Hampton. So here we are, 150 films growing every year. How does it feel? It feels exhilarating, it's really wonderful. I mean, sort of to see one of my children be in the Hampton Film Festival. Yes, I have a daughter, Rose, 16, and another daughter, Zoe, who's 20, but seeing this festival is one of my children sort of grow and blossom, it's really exciting. Newlyweds Alec and Hilaria Baldwin like the movie Amour in the festival, but their favorite love story... It's the one that we're doing right now. It's the wow. real life. <laughs> It's a real life yes. love movie. My life is Every a love movie. Every day is a love movie. I guess marriage is suiting you well, yeah? It works. Dree Hemingway has her breakout role in The Starlet. She's on Variety's top 10 to watch list. You could say creativity runs in the family. Some people may not know that you're the great granddaughter of Ernest Hemingway. How has his work inspired you? I think one of the things I've definitely taken from him is the exploration and being able to travel and, and being privileged enough too, which is amazing. And new mom Sienna Miller came to the Hamptons for the very first time to support her film The Girl. I play Tippi Hedren in uh, a film called The Girl, which is about the making of the birds, the Alfred Hitchcock film. Do you still love birds? Yeah, not as much. <laughs> That's not what as I much. thought, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> in East Hampton, Julie Chang, Fox 5. Marilyn Monroe probably would have loved to attend the chairman's reception because she was a Hamptons goer herself. She's being undressed in a new documentary shown at the festival called Love, Marilyn. As our Teresa Priolo tells us, the film's crew got to unearth never before seen documents to learn about the legend. So much has been said and written about Marilyn Monroe. Well, now it's her turn to tell her story. Love, Marilyn, shown here at the Hamptons International Film Festival, gives a deeply personal account of a life so public yet so private. Some of the things that have been missed in Marilyn is how actually how today a modern woman can relate to Marilyn Monroe. And that sounds sort of surprising and shocking. Director Liz Garbus is bringing Marilyn Monroe back to life. In the moving documentary Love Marilyn, she's called on actors like Uma Thurman, Marissa Tomei, and Glenn Close to give voice to the icon's innermost thoughts, painting the picture of a deeply insecure and troubled woman longing to be considered good enough. We worked for uh, a long time uh, l looking into archival, uh, researching, trying to find fresh footage. This stuff was locked in some storage compartments um, that the Strasbergs, who Marilyn uh, it gave her estate to when she died. They managed her estate. And when the Strasbergs were moving, they found two boxes that had never been cataloged or gone through. They sat on it for quite a long time. And then finally, a few years ago, decided to make them public. For people that sort of think they know her, that really kind of goes into the difference between her public persona and her private life. It's amazing. And what a place to let Marilyn shine. Please have your drinks ready, everybody. On the opening night of the Hamptons International Film Festival, which also coincides with the 50th anniversary of Monroe's death. 
Marilyn Monroe loved the Hamptons. Uh, she came out to Amagansett a lot with Arthur Miller and uh, Norman Rostin, so maybe it's an, a very appropriate place to be showing the film. I think there could be some big awards in store for this film. Love Marilyn will be released by HBO sometime next summer. I'm Teresa Priolo at the Hamptons International Film Festival. From Hollywood legends to Hollywood freshmen, they're the actors we'll be keeping our eyes on. Variety's 10 actors to watch, breakthrough performers of 2012. The Young Guns took part in a panel discussion moderated by Variety's executive editor, Stephen Gatos. One of those stars, Scoot McNary, is featured in Argo with Ben Affleck. Argo is a thriller based loosely on the true story of the plan to free six Americans taken hostage in Tehran during the Iranian Revolution. I play one of the six house guests that escapes uh, and gets held up at the ambassador's, uh, Canadian ambassador's embassy. Ben had set us up. Uh, he put us in a house for six days and made the six of us all live together, uh, no cell phones, so we got to know each other really well. Scoot goes on to say that preparing for the movie felt like being in a time warp. A fish market, a mobster, and a hostage situation. Not the most common storyline for a comedy, but one that Brendan Fraser is really proud of. He describes whole lot of soul in a way only Fraser can. There's a hit out on my head. A big bag of money, a fish, a Tommy gun, and a baby in a, in a pram. Northern Ireland is the setting for a whole lot of soul, which is about a botched fish market robbery that leads to the involvement of police and a gangster who's out for revenge. Whole Lot of Soul has also been shown at the Tribeca and Belfast Film Festivals. From Belfast to New Jersey, the Garden State in the 1960s is the setting for Not Fade Away, about a group of friends that form a rock band hoping to make it to the big time. Our Ashley Mastronardi joins us now with more. Hello, Ashley. Thanks, Jill. Sopranos creator David Chase wrote and directed Not Fade Away and used some familiar faces from the hit TV show to take part in the film. David Chase has come a long way from The Sopranos. In his first feature film, Not Fade Away, Chase documents the journey of a fictional 1960s garage band that never quite makes it past their front lawn. The film has been compared to coming-of-age band movies like Almost Famous, but Chase says his focus is different. It's really about the musicians. It's not about fan fandom. It's not about, uh, it's not about social issues or politics. It's really about learning to play guitar, learning to play drums, and trying to uh, make sense of the whole thing. And learning how to play those instruments was a challenge for the cast who had no musical experience. We had a pretty much like a three month crash course of uh, everything. I mean like uh, music theory, music history. Lead actress Bella Heathcote says she took a more traditional approach to prepping for her role as Grace. I think I went the fairly normal route of just doing research on the period and I spoke to David a lot and I listened to the music. The cast agrees that music is one of the most important parts of the film and who better to oversee that music than Tony Soprano's right hand man and E Street band member Stephen Van Zandt. He says the Hamptons Film Festival Festival is a long way from Jersey. I'm not a Hamptons in the summer guy, you know. Uh, this is foreign territory for me. Might as well, might as well be the south of France. Van Zant not only curated music for the movie, but he also wrote a song for it called the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Jill? Thanks so much, Ashley. Nathan Lane brings down the house in a special presentation to a Hollywood costume legend. Coming up, how Lane says underwear contributed to an embarrassing moment during a costume fitting. Then, actor Alan Cumming, a busy bee at this year's festival, but he had time to stop by our studios, what he had to say on set. Plus, a Long Island salon hits the big time and is featured in a documentary at the festival. We'll tell you why.
Welcome back. Long Island is appropriately the setting for several films shown at the Hamptons International Film Festival, including one documentary that features an Islip beauty salon helping cancer patients cope with losing their hair. This is Monday's At Racine. I caught up with a breast cancer survivor featured in the film who talks about the relationship with her husband and how it fell apart. It's uh, hard to become a caregiver, um, uh, especially when you're not, you're not meant to do that. Linda considers herself a seven-time breast cancer survivor because it has gone into remission and come back so many times. Even former Mayor Ed Koch making headlines at the Hamptons International Film Festival this year. Koch the movie premiered at the festival and chronicles how the three-term mayor left an indelible mark on the city and how he retains his political clout today. The mayor told Rosanna and Dave on Good Day New York that there were parts he likes and doesn't like about the movie. There were things in it I didn't like, but I didn't ask for a single change. I, I suggested what didn't you like? nothing. Well, I thought my relationship with the black community was better than he projected it. <laughs> okay, is that revisionist history or is that... <laughs> Who knows? He is director Neil Barsky. Another former mayor made an appearance at the festival, Rudy Giuliani. He tells us what his favorite part about it is. It's in New York, yeah. so this is the capital of the world, and everyone has a great interest in, in New York, and a lot of people in the film community across live out here, so that also makes it very, very interesting. Giuliani went to the screening of Love, Marilyn. Nathan Lane remembering a thinner time in his career. Next, why Lane says he was so vulnerable in a fitting with a Hollywood costume legend. Then, a murder in the Hamptons, a millionaire father is dead. We take a step back to 2001 and the headline-grabbing death of Ted Ammon. Nathan Lane had us cracking up at the tribute to legendary costume designer Ann Roth. The stage and screen actor worked with Roth at the very beginning of his career and explains he was slightly intimidated when he first met her at a costume fitting. Also, when you're standing in your underwear under fluorescent lighting, you tend to become more vulnerable. These were the days when I still enjoyed costume fittings. That's how long ago this was. You're much too kind which probably means the gift bag will be a little light this year. I'm, I'm definitely overdressed. <clears throat> I've been mistaken for a limo driver three times already. And I promise I will bring the car around the front. Ann Roth's career has spanned six decades and more than 100 film credits, including an Academy Award for the English Patient. She says her job is not so much about designing costumes as it is keeping the peace. Mostly, I know that if the actor's happy, the director will be happy. Roth has also been nominated for three additional Academy Awards and four Tonys. Set in East Hampton, 59 Middle Lane is another documentary shown at the festival that has Long Island ties. The film has a storyline ripped right out of the headlines. It's so weird. It's just, I know, it's it is so weird. It's so surreal. In 2001, there was a murder in East Hampton. A millionaire father was dead and suspicion fell upon his wife and lover. I remember mom, but all I remember are the bad things. The death of Ted Ammon shocked the community and many had suspicions his wife, Jenna Rosa, was involved. They were going through a heated divorce and she began to have an affair with her electrician, Daniel Pelosi. 
But behind the headlines were the ruined lives of two young children, twins, Greg and Alexa Ammon, who were only 10 years old. Now these children are young adults and are ready to share their horrific experience with the world. What made you and your sister want to relive this? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, just letting go and moving forward was something that me and Alexa have been, you know, trying to do for some time. And so um, for me personally, it was really, you know, this is a very therapeutic process for me. Somebody laughs, somebody cries. That's a lie. They were adopted from the Ukraine when they were infants by Greg and Generosa, but were orphaned again when their mother passed away from cancer just a few years after Ted's death. Yeah. You went back to Ukraine. Now, what was that experience like? Uh, incredible, shocking. I mean, all the feelings that you know you feel you, you don't even you can you don't even know. I mean, it just it's it's extreme. Greg and Alexa's journey takes you back to the childhood they escaped before they got to know, and then they revisited their East Hampton home at 59 Middle Lane, which holds the painful memories and deaths of both their parents. It's just a really beautiful film that uh, hopefully, you know, people will, you know, understand that this is a really, um, you know, personal story. The story doesn't end there for Greg. He's already producing his first feature film called Enemy of the People. In just a couple of years, the Hamptons International Film Festival has gone from a sleepy festival on the water to a premiere event. Alec Baldwin says just five years ago, hardly anyone even heard of it. And now people are lining the streets of East Hampton to see different films. I, for one, wasn't sure it would last, you know, and then it has lasted, so I'm looking forward to where it'll be five and ten years from now. We look to outreach to all the important film festivals, the Hamptons being one of them, uh, so that we can meet the young filmmakers and uh, hopefully they'll want to become members of the Academy. This year, more than 100 movies were featured at the festival. We all know Stevie Nicks as a singer, so what's she doing in a new documentary? The little cameras that we were all using uh, became non-existent. You know, you forget the cameras are there. Coming up, how Stevie is making a big splash back into the spotlight after a 10-year hiatus. Then Sting and his wife Trudy walk the red carpet. What Trudy says has changed so much about the festival in just a few years. After a 10-year hiatus, rock legend Stevie Nicks is back in the spotlight with her latest album and rockumentary, In Your Dreams, which made its world premiere at the Hamptons International Film Festival. Some call a strange lady from the mountains. Stevie had cameras follow her around nearly 24-7 for a year for the documentary, which chronicles the making of the album. We didn't want it to look like a, like we'd set it up, because we didn't set any of it up. It just is what it is. The documentary was produced with the Eurythmics' Dave Stewart. Stevie wasn't the only musician at the festival. Sting and his wife Trudy Styler also made an appearance. Trudy came to present Focus on UK Film, a lineup of new UK productions. Trudy first came to the festival in 1994 when she showed her film Moving to the Mountain and says a lot has changed since then. It's become much bigger, still retaining its uh, lovely intimacy, however, which we love, the relaxed feeling of uh, the Hamptons. Um, and Trudy also served as a member of the narrative jury, which selects films for the Golden Starfish Awards. Actor Alan Cumming has a touch of something, but it's not a cold. Coming up, what he told Rosanna and Dave about an award he presented and why it reminded him of a disease. So hold my
my hand, I'll walk with you, my dear. After Alan Cumming, a busy bee at this year's festival, he presented an award, participated in the, a conversation with series, and promoted a film called Any Day Now. The Good Wife actor stopped by Good Day New York to chat with Rosanna and Dave. Yeah, these awards called the Golden Starfish Awards, and I'm hosting the Why award. are you laughing about that, that, Alan? <laughs> because I said earlier in the break that I think Golden Starfish sounds like an STD. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yes, I think I remember that. It just sounds a bit, I was hoping you I've would repeat little, it. A little touch of the golden starfish this week, but some pills will clear it up. Any Day Now is about a mentally challenged teenager who was abandoned and taken in by a gay couple. Cumming says it's a real tearjerker. And that does it for us tonight. Thank you so much for watching this Fox 5 Hamptons International Film Festival special presented by Capital One. I'm Jill Nicolini. Have a great night.